Hello and welcome to For the Clarity and Closure of the Viewers' Comments. I'm just going to say a few brief things before we begin. Number one, when you choose to comment on my YouTube channel, there are terms and conditions, there are rules that you must follow. It's my house. I expect you to follow the rules. If you don't, your comment probably will not be published. Also, I ask that you be honorable and graceful, i.e. respectful of everyone here. Please don't go around telling people what they should or shouldn't do. And if you come here making claims, making claims about this or that or the third or something that's happened to you or whatever, having to do with grammar or courts or whatever, you better be able to certify your correct sentence structure knowledge because this is a correct sentence structure channel and I am going to call you to the carpet on it if you start making claims about something that you perhaps don't know what you're talking about. It's very important for the safety of the vessel. If you have closure on correct sentence structure, you should be able to provide that proof like that on the spot. So keep that in mind. The energy you bring here, I will return. I will balance it out with rule one, rule equal. So without further ado, let's get to the comments. First comment comes from April, who is also a member. Thank you very much for your membership. And they say, learning CSS CPSG is not that difficult. Watching the videos takes time and lots of it, but well worth the effort. Well, I agree, you know, it's well worth the effort. However, while it may not be that difficult for you, and I'm glad it's not that difficult for you, for others, they might not share that same perception. For me, you know, and I might be a slow learner, it took me over 2,000 hours before I could even use this stuff, and I didn't even have full closure on it then. Uh, so, I mean, everybody's different. I absolutely love learning this. It has become my passion. Why has it become my passion? One might ask, because with clarity comes closure, and with closure comes peace. Much respect, Jason, not just for the videos, but for the hours that also happen behind the scenes to bring this to the public for free. It is free learning, peeps. How much more can one ask for than free? That is correct. Um, that is the rule one, rule equal performance that I provide to my fellow mankind. Over 600 videos on this channel that I've invested thousands of hours in. Uh, all my, you know, correct sentence structure knowledge is collected as a whole on this channel. And it's there for anyone who wants to study it. Thanks for the comment. Next comment comes from Dennis Blair. And they say, I've seen a judge go blue in the face and throw parse syntax filings back at the head of a defendant whilst screaming at him for wasting the court's time with such frivolous babble. <laughs> That's pretty funny, Dennis Blair. And I did uh, give Cooley honor to this comment. And I basically said, uh, you know, that's a wonderful story. Uh, how would you know what a correct sentence structure communication parse syntax grammar looks like if you yourself don't have closure on the grammar? Which I'm making a guess here, but I'm guessing you don't have any idea how it works. So if you don't know how it works, how do you know if someone else knows how it works if you're in a courtroom? Because if a judge is throwing filings back at a claimant, then that means, or I'm sorry, a defendant, then that means that defendant did not take jurisdiction over the court. It means they're still under the jurisdiction of that judge. They didn't void all the boxes and uh, planes, and they didn't use correct sentence structure. They did not claim the will of the court. They did not correctly use the flag of the land during the time of the contract the one by 1.9 flag with correct grammar mechanics, banking mechanics, postal mechanics, flag mechanics, etc., etc., etc. That's all that says to me. So, balls in your court, Dennis Blair. Thanks for the comment. Next comment comes from member Isaac. Thank you very much for your membership, Isaac. And they say, for the claimant's knowledge of the facts is with the thankfulness of the live stream with the free Call a qua? Call a call? Okay. Sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that word. By the claimant's knowledge. Very nicely done with the uh, quantum grammar shorthand. Your participation with that. 
I'd be curious to know what your finite mean, what your correct sentence structure closure is on the word free, on the word C-O-L-L-O-Q-U-Y, and also the word free hyphen C-O-L-L-O-Q-U-Y. I'm curious as to what your closure is on those three finite means. Thanks for the comment. Another one from Isaac, and he says, for the claimant's knowledge of the facts is with the cognition of the lecture with the word forming element of the positive performance contract with the parse data by this claimant's knowledge. That's a, that's a very nice sentence. That's, uh, of course, sequentially correct with the positionals. However, I see multiple particles of negation in your facts, such as the ing particle of negation, such as the vowel in front of a consonant, an element, particle of negation, such as the contra particle of negation in the word contract. So it's good to watch out for those things and to, you know, very, be very meticulous about how you present your facts and whether there's particles of negation in them. Uh, but other than that, great job, Isaac. Thank you. Next comment comes from Timothy John, and they say, greetings there, Jason. Timothy John here. Colon Timothy Ivan John, colon Clark. I just reckon you are a brilliant teacher of the cause and effect perspective the CSS CPSG technology builds and necessitates by the thinking and doing. So thanks for being the best you possible. The, so thanks for being the best you possible in all of your work. My sincere honor and grace, by your help. Colon Timothy Ivan John, colon Clark. Thank you very much, Timothy. Much gratitude for the comment and the kind words. I appreciate that. Next comment comes from member James Alexander. Thank you very much for your membership, James. And they say, for the claimant's knowledge of the facts is with this claim of the gratitude sensation with the video log and playlist of the tuition performance with the YouTube page vessel of the Jason hyphen Matthew with the balance of the honor and of the grace with the page vessel terms of the comment performance with the maintenance of the rule one and rule equal, with the peace and with the neutrality of the claim, with the correct sentence structure performance by the claimant, James Alexander Jennings. Thanks for the hours of tuition freely given on your channel, Jason. Thank you very much for the awesome correct sentence structure, James. Thanks for the membership. Um, just as you use the brackets to put colon glass in there, which there should have been a, a space between the colon and the glass, just a small little thing. And also your name at the end would also have to have a uh, bracket after the R, between the R and the colon space, and then a, a bracket after the S in Jennings, and then the period after the bracket, uh, because YouTube does not allow for the underlining. Um, just a couple little small things. Thanks for the comment. Next comment comes from Jeff Baird, and they say, everything that was mentioned is correct. What if the lender loaned you your own money, providing an illusion of a loan? The signed promissory note treated as a draft deposited into a demand deposit account turns, in, turns the promissory note into cash. Well, let's take this apart here at the beginning here. It says, uh, what if the lender loaned you your own money? So how did the lender get your money? Did you pay the lender money? So, so say, for example, Jeff, uh, you owe me money or, or you buy something from me or you give me money. Okay, now I have that money. Does that money have my name on it? Is it my money or is it your money? You gave it to me, so it must be my money. And now I'm going to give it back to you. I'm going to lend it back to you. Is it still my money or is it your money? Whose money is it? You see what I'm saying here? I'm not, I'm not quite getting what you're what you're trying to convey i'm not sure like an illusion of a loan how a loan an illusion if someone lends you money that money has a history of course where to come from what does it matter where it comes from unless someone physically robbed you of it um i mean who can say promissory by the way means uh, pro means no it's particle of negation that's a fiction term of course Title 42, 1813, that's fiction, of course. Then the bank manifests the illusion of a loan with the house already paid in full, providing no disclosure to the borrower. 
providing no no closure because disclosure means no closure. So here's the thing. You don't have to participate with the banking system. You don't have to participate with central banking if you don't want to. It's up to you, Jeff. It's your choice. If you think or if you, your opinion in the banking system, your position on the banking system is that it's fraudulent and they're doing these things, why would you contract with them then? Why would you knowingly contract with someone that you know is going to screw you over? Contracts by consent. It's your choice. It's your duty to be knowledgeable of what you're getting into. It really is. To read all the, all the contracts, to dot all the I's, cross all the T's. Um, and then no one can really take advantage of you. So I'm not sure what you're getting at with this. That's like rich uncle that secretly purchased you a car. When you go back, when you go to pick up the car, the dealership fails to disclose the rich uncle purchasing the car for you and creates a loan for you. Without disclosure, there is no contract. Without consent, there's no contract. If you're saying with no closure, there's contract, there's no contract. That's absolutely not true. Lots of people contract every single day without closure. Like the people that agree to use Facebook, they click the agree button, but they don't read the contract. So they don't have closure on it, but yet they've still contracted. Contract is by choice. Yes, it is logical. And it's also, you're also duty bound before you agree to know the terms and conditions of the contract, but not everybody does that. Some people will just rush through a contract without knowing the terms and conditions, agree to it. And then a month later, start whining and crying that they're getting screwed over because they didn't read the contract. They were not knowledgeable about what they were getting into. And then they cry about it. So it's better to just know what it is you're getting into. And then you can make a knowledgeable decision, a knowledgeable choice about what you're doing. It's not the most popular thing to say to people. People don't want to be told that it's not nascience. They don't want to be told that it's their fault that they're getting screwed over because they didn't read the contract. They didn't redo the research or the study and look into it. Again, you don't have to contract with these people if you don't want to. It's your choice, buddy. Thank you. Next comment, again, comes from Jeff Baird, and they say, you paid for you house in full at closing. Your house is paid for. As I uh, responded in the comments field, thank you for your knowledge of my house. I mean, um, you seem very sure of yourself that you know about my house. Uh, so thank you for sharing that knowledge. That's, that's good to know. Appreciate the comment. Next comment comes from someone named Truth Seeker. And they say, it's all Mason crap. Juan O'Saven is a joke. CIA operation. He claimed he busted drug in Cali. He claimed he busted drug in Cali? Not sure what that means. Um, but uh, you're entitled to your opinion, truth seeker. Thanks for sharing it here. Not sure what it has to do with... Uh, Oh, I know what it has to do with. It has to do with uh, the fact that uh, it's on the live stream that I did where I was asking the question, is David Wynn Miller dead? Because there are some people, some feller sent me an email saying that uh, Juan O'Saven was David Wynn Miller, which gave me a great chuckle. So now, okay, now I know the context of this. As far as it being all Mason crap, yeah, you're entitled to your opinion. Thanks for sharing it. Next comment comes from Jeff Louise, and they say you can get the DJM book from his wife for 200 bucks. I'm not sure what a DJM book is. I'm not sure. I'm not sure who DJM's wife is, so I'm not sure the context of your comment there. It is possible that you meant DWM, David Wynn Miller, but I wasn't aware that David Wynn Miller was married or that David's wife sells his book. Greetings, Jason. Keep up the awesome work. Thank you, Jeff. Please reach out if and when ready to talk plainly. Uh, Jeff, I talk plainly every single day, 100% of the time. I'm always ready and I always talk plainly. Although I'm not sure why I would contact you. I know that I offer grammar tutoring services, and if you're interested in learning correct sentence structure, you can contact me 
at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com, but I'm not sure why uh, I would reach out to you. Is there, are you offering me something? Is, uh, you trying to sell me something, bro? That's, that's kind of strange. On another note, I thought you said you felt he was not dead on one of the live streams you did recently that I also commented on. That's not correct. I have never, ever said that. Again, if you're going to make a claim, you have to back it up. So please provide a link with a timestamp, you know, to the video you're talking about. But I have to predict that this guy's going to come back and say, I don't have the time to go look for that. Right. So anyways, um, thanks for the comment. Thanks for the kind words. And um, if, you want to re if you want to contact me, you're more than welcome to do it. But I really don't know why I would reach out to you. That's strange. Next comment comes from member Spencer. Thank you for your membership, Spencer. And he says, it's better to be a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war. I definitely see the logic behind that uh, sentiment. It's good to know how to, you know, navigate yourself in those dangerous, high pressure, even sometimes violent situations to be able to get yourself and your loved ones through safely, for sure. Um, but for myself personally, um, I voided all military contracts and do not contract with warriors or anyone with warlike volition because it's my experience that if you're going to claim to be a warrior, then you're going to have war. War is going to come your way, right? That's just the way it works. And I feel that our society as a whole over, you know, however many thousands or millions of years we've been here on this planet, that war has just been a continuing cycle of fighting, 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 fighting for this, fighting for peace, which is ridiculous saying. I, for one, want something different. So I don't participate with warriors or wars or anything like that. Just don't do it. Um, peaceful and neutral. Next comment comes from, from fiction to fact. And they say, what's with all the infighting? Honest question. It ruins credibility in my mind to see an anthill and all the ants fighting and not building anything of worth. So let's take a look at this. There's a lot of assumption in this question. What's with all the infighting? What infighting? When you say infighting, you're implying that there's a group and then p things are fighting, people are fighting in the group. I'm not in any group. All right, I'm not affiliated with anyone except for Ray's Wisdom, my best student, Colin Ricardo, Colin Marseille, and my tutor, Colin Raven, Ivan Farhad, Ivan Tohidi, Colin Eferin, who doesn't have anything to do with anything quantum grammar related or the quantum grammar community or nothing. Raven is outside, out on Earth somewhere, doing all kinds of cool stuff that has nothing to do with quantum grammar. The only time he ever really talks about it is if I contact him. So I'm not fighting anyone. So I'm not sure what this uh, from fiction to fact is saying. And then he says, on it, or he or she says, honest question, which is great because I appreciate honest questions. When people ask me dishonest questions, that's when I have a problem. It ruins credibility in my mind. Well, that is your mind. And if uh, this fictional presumptive, assumptive situation ruins credibility of something, uh, that's your choice. To see an ant hill and all the ants fighting and not building anything of worth. Again, you know, if you think that the 600 plus videos, grammar videos that I've invested thousands of hours in creating and producing, publishing to the public free of charge, if you think that's not anything of worth, again, that's in your mind. Um, but the 5,000 plus subscribers I have hopefully feel differently. And what you, the value of a thing is what you ascribe to it. And if you ascribe the net worth of this channel and the knowledge it contains as zero, again, that's your choice. Thank you for the comment. Another comment from Fiction to Fact. And they say, this video is great for me just to get a basic understanding to see if this is something I want to tackle. I have my claim but I am so intimidated by the scope of knowledge needed at this point. This is a great introduction video. Well, I'm glad you appreciate that from fiction to fact. And here's another thing. I did ask you in a response to one of your comments, 
why you don't use your correct name. And your response was, you don't know the grammar enough to write your correct name. That That's, in a sense, you know, that's what I was asking. But I'm also asking, you don't have to share. You, you would share your correct name to the best of your knowledge. What I'm basically saying is, you're using a nom de guerre. You're not using your name. Like my adjective, adjective, pronoun name in the fiction would be Jason Matthew Glass. I use that name. I contract in the fiction with it, and I contract in the fact with Colin Jason Ivy Matthew Colin Glass. You won't even share that. I just ask the same consideration. What is your name? You know my name, Jason Matthew Glass. I mean, when your mother was at the hospital and you were born, did your mother and father say, oh, let's name them from fiction to fact? No, that's not your correct name. That's not your name. That's what I'm saying is a lot of people on the inter internet like to use nom de guerres um, and sort of, I guess, hide behind them. So that, that's all I was saying there. You know, you know my name. I just ask the same consideration of you. And of course, it's your choice as to whether you want to use your correct name or whether you want to use a name that is not your name. Next comment comes from Hulu2, and they say Juan, and they mean Juan O'Savin, is actually JFK Jr. Well, that's an interesting claim. I'd like to see evidence of that claim. But um, I think Hulu2 and I both know that there's no way to certify those types of claims. Tiz reported who, based upon the odd events surrounding his death, as well as historically a master of disguise. I did not know that. I don't know anything about JFK Jr., Having had to learn the craft while very young and one of the strangest facts, as it is told, I don't think I would call anything related to what you're talking about as a fact, Hulu 2. But I digress. His best male friend being Orange Veil Bad. No idea what that means. Juan O is a guest on many Patriot channels and a huge proponent of Q, as well the Bible. Well, Q is an anonymous, conspiracy, non-certifiable gobbledygook from my position. And same thing with the Bible. So thanks for the comment, and thanks for sharing your thoughts. As an addendum to this, I don't really get too involved. I stay as far away from the Q stuff as I can, because it's all just non-certifiable nonsense as far as I'm concerned. Maybe some of it may be true, maybe not. But who really cares if someone's not going to put their name and their face next to what they're claiming? Then I want nothing to do with it. Because they're just, you know, basically hiding and trying to stir the pot. That's, that's all I see. Pot stirring to get people riled up. And as evidenced by a lot of uh, people who spread the cue info the q drops that psyop is working very successfully next comment comes from wyatt hunter and they say, thought you might find this interesting and i forget what that link goes to but it had nothing to do with the video that it's posted under it had nothing to do with correct sentence structure communication policy syntax grammar so i'm addressing this comment just to say Please don't post links to other stuff. If you want to send me links, email me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com, and I'll look at it there, but it has no place on the channel, and it won't get published, unless it has specifically to do with grammar mechanics. Thank you. And the final comment is the nom de guerre from Fiction to Fact, which we covered two of their other comments here, and they say, Oh, this is a response. They say, thank you for the reply. I reread my comment. I didn't mean to direct it to you, but to the quantum grammar community. I'm not trying to stir the pot, but my observation starts with DWM in the feud during his last days with RJG, RGJ. I think they mean RGJ, RJG. I don't want to throw any names under the bus, but of the six quantum grammar teachers I have found, they all try to discredit each other. Well, that's interesting because I only know of two teachers of quantum grammar, one being my student, Colin Ricardo, and the other one being Raven. Those are two tutors that I can certify no correct sentence structure. 
And I do this by auditing their grammar, okay? So as far as six teachers, how, I mean, I do know what you mean from fiction to fact when you say they're trying to discredit each other because I've been slandered by people affiliated with Russell J. Gould. They slander me, say I'm a bad, bad, bad guy. They say I'm a bad actor, whatever. Whatever they want to say about me, they say like personal insults and slurs. I don't do that. What I do is I audit grammar, all right? And you can go back from fiction to fact. You can go back and look at my video reactions and I syntax Russell J. Gould's grammar. I syntax the Syntax Learning Center's grammar and I show that it's a fictitious conveyance of grammar. I'm not discrediting them as people. I'm showing that their grammar is not correct and I'm showing it as a pitfall for people like you who are new to the game to avoid. That's all I'm doing. Some guys say DWM is the one to study from, not RJG. Well, here's the thing about that. RJG was David Wynn Miller's student. David Wynn Miller taught Russell J. Gould. So anything that Russell J. Gould knows about the grammar, he learned from David Wynn Miller. So it doesn't matter. I mean, Russell J. Gould's only going to teach what he learned from David Wynn Miller. Some say DWM is a self-admitted Freemason. Yes, he is. That, that's a fact. He admitted, he claimed and admitted to be a 92nd degree Mason. Now, whether that's true or not, I have no way to certify that. I just know that, that that's what the man himself claimed. And that he taught the technology to horrible people. <laughs> Many people saying RJG is a fraud, that we don't need his autograph claim. Well, RJG uses a fictitious conveyance of grammar. Okay. You definitely don't need a live life claim from the guy unless you want a live life claim that has incorrect grammar on it. I mean, it's up to you. And the way to certify that is to learn the grammar for yourself. And then you can certify everything I'm saying. Leroy Horton arrested by RJG. That's the first I've ever heard of that one. I guess they're back one friendly terms. RJG filing copyright claim against you. Um, if by that you mean the YouTube copyright strike that Daria Prince filed against my channel, yes, that did happen. Because they can't do anything with correct sentence structure because I don't think they know how. They went to the fiction entity known as YouTube and filed a strike against me, tried to get a strike against my channel, which my channel has no strikes on it. So that tells you how that turned out. They failed at that too. Um, there is a guy out there giving seminars with not completely accurate information. How would you know what is accurate or not accurate if you don't know the grammar yourself? Ask yourself that question. It appears that some of you, in trying to be correct, try to discredit the others by saying the others are not are all not correct. Um, yes, it is my volition to be correct. Together along the same track. Yes, that is true. And that is not trying to be correct. What I'm trying to do is to help people like you credential what correct grammar is and what isn't. And the best way for you to do that is to learn the grammar. That's the best way for you to do it. And there are over 600 videos on this channel for you to do it with. If this is new to you, then please see it as an observation for someone who just began their journey into truth. I might be way off. Well, you are off on a lot of those things because I was personally involved in a lot of the things that you're talking about. I've been at this for over five years. So you're admittedly new to this. I highly recommend, as I said in the comments, do some research, do some study, go through the history, especially the history before David Wynn Miller passed away, the way things were done, the way Russell J. Gould acted before David passed and then after he passed. I choose not to use my QG name yet because I have no idea how to use the technology. I don't want to be incorrect in a correct environment. Well, for me, 
I try to be as correct as I possibly can at all times, no matter what the environment. But of course, it's your choice uh, how you want to navigate. If you want to share your name or you don't want to share your name, that's your choice. Um, I appreciate you taking the time to write out the comment. I appreciate everyone who's commented here. Learn the grammar first, and then you can vet who you participate with and who you don't, who you give credit to and who you don't give credit to. All right? That's the best way to do it. Instead of just sort of, you know, flapping around from this to that to the third, participating with rumors and gossip. That's why I don't affiliate with any of these people at all. Um, what I just try and do is show what correct grammar is and also give examples of what it isn't and then also give examples of how to correct it. And it's up to those individuals who are not correct to take my offering. A lot of times it, I feel like it's ego. Um, nobody wants to stop and correct. They don't want to admit that they don't know something. And before you say, well, Jason, that's what you do, look at my list of videos. Just go down through the videos and find how many times I've literally publicly stopped and corrected because a mistake was pointed out to me. I just did it on the nitrogen narcosis thing, Necro narcosis thing, where I said it was the bends. I was wrong. And a deep sea diver pointed that out to me, and I stopped and corrected, and I gave credit to the guy for, for correcting me. I corrected that. I also corrected uh, a while ago. I did a syntax uh, video where I skipped an entire line of syntax and a fellow pointed it out to me. I stopped and corrected and the public gave them credit. I stopped and corrected my name. I can keep going down the list of how many times I've stopped and corrected in the public because a very important element to learning this grammar is having humility and cultivating that. Now, as to whether I actually come off as being humble or not, I don't know. That's up to you to decide. But for me, it's about trying at all times to cultivate that mentality. Humility. These other folks, apparently, because they don't, they don't correct their grammar, that's on them. So, till the next time. Peace. If you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me. You can ask me whatever you like, and I'll do the same, and we'll see if this is something that uh, you're prepared to commit to. If you'd like to support the channel, click on the Join button underneath this video. There are two tiers of membership. Uh, the second tier has access to exclusive content not available to the public. Once again, thank you for watching. Uh, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Turn the notification bell to all so that you don't miss any of my premieres because I do post on a very consistent basis. There are over 500 correct sentence structure videos for here you to study on this channel. My gift to you, my fellow mankind. Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next one.